Hi there, this is Inmation. Welcome to Selecting Hair Part 2. In this video, we are going to be specifically focusing on removing edge fringe. What do I mean by that? Well, have a look at this image. You would agree that this is a pretty nice selection, nice masking, right? Now, if I put her over a white background, she still looks pretty good and selection looks amazing because she was actually shot in a light gray background. But, however, if I put her over a, you know, dark background, as you can see, you see this notorious white fringe on the edge of her hair. Watch. Today we're gonna learn how to fix this straight inside of Photoshop. Now, if you want to learn how to select hair and if you want to know three magical tips on selecting hair precisely, I've made a video about it. Go check the link in the description below or I'll link it right here or here. So without any further ado, let's get started. Before we begin, I've got to tell you something up front. This method will only work with Photoshop CC 2015.5 and above. So if you're using an older version like CC 2014 or even Photoshop CS6, this method won't because the select and mask feature was introduced with Photoshop CC 2015.5. So time to upgrade, it is worth upgrading and if you don't, you will regret it. Trust me, it's amazing. All right, so let's begin by making a selection right from the scratch, but this time I'm gonna be a little quick. If you actually want to know how to make a selection of hair and from scratch in detail, go ahead and check out the video that I had linked in the beginning. So that was part one of the video. So let's get to it. All right. To make a selection, first off, select a selection tool, click on select and mask and start selecting. Or in the last video, I actually also talked about the different views you have. So if you want to know in detail about them, go ahead and check it out. So select the quick selection tool. This one is the quick selection tool and start painting over your subject, right? Okay, now that seems pretty good and the selection looks okay-ish, but there are some adjustments that we still have to make. As you can see, that there are some intricate areas that needs to be refined. Now, how do we refine it? Refine Edge tool, all right? So this one is the Refine Edge tool and let's zoom in and simply paint over the areas that are quite complex that you cannot select manually, all right? So just let's paint over it. There's nothing much you have to do. And yes, to make the brush smaller or bigger, press and hold Alter Option, right mouse button, drag to the right to make it smaller, drag to the left to make it a small, a vice versa, drag upwards to make it soft, drag downwards to make it hard. All right, let's paint over the areas. It's pretty good. And let's paint right here. Okay. That's nice. Paint here. And yes, I just forgot to tell you. Once you're zoomed in, and then if you want to move between different locations, all you need to do, Press and hold the space bar and once you press the space bar, watch your cursor changes to a hand and then you can easily drag and move. Once your position is fixed, once you have decided that, okay, I'll work in this position, release the space bar and your cursor changes back to the refine edge tool. Okay, so that was a quick tip there. All right, let's paint over this area. That's pretty good. Nice. Okay. Now, as you still can see that if I go ahead and increase the transparency, the fringe is there. Now, how do we get over it? Easy. Now, before I show you this step, I apologize up front because I made you watch the whole video for just, just, just this one simple step. So scroll down and click on this decontaminate colors. Watch, watch. It's gone. It's gone. Okay. This was essential because I'm going to explain how this actually works. All right. Now, when you select decontaminate colors, you see that some options are gone. Like layer mask option is gone. Selection option is gone. Why? We're going to discuss that in a moment. But first off, let's go with new layer with a layer mask and click. Okay. 
Now this is a pretty nice selection, this looks nice too. But if I zoom in, as you can see, this kind of looks pretty ugly right here. Why? Because the color of the hair is lighter than the background, which is not possible because this is a dark background. At this point, you might have to increase the brightness of the background. So select the background and add an adjustment layer of brightness contrast and increase the brightness to a point where it looks okay-ish. Alright, so I think this one is fine. Let's zoom out and see how it looks. It looks pretty good, right? Let's decrease the contrast. Yeah, now it looks fine. Now how this works? Well, if you have noticed carefully, if you have keen eyes, you might have noticed that there are two layers now instead of one. This fashion woman was there already, but this layer has been automatically turned off and a new layer has been created with a mask, as we saw in the option just below decontaminate layer, a decontaminate colors, right? So there was an option new layer with layer mask, so that's why new layer has been created and the old layer has been turned off. If I turn off the mask here, watch what's there. The hair has been increased has been expanded, but the mask is the same. That's how it, it actually works. If you have still not got it, I have an example for you. Alright, suppose this is the hair and I make a selection like this. Now as you can see, there's a gap between the hair and the selection. And if I keep the selection, you're going to see this fringe. Now what Photoshop does when you check decontaminate colors is that it takes the colors from the edges and expands it like this. It just expands it and keeps the selection intact. The selection is still intact. It just expands the hair and keeps the mask intact, creates a new layer. Alright, so let's move back. That's the reason why it creates a new layer. Otherwise, it had to edit the layer which is a smart object. That's why it created a new layer and it has rasterized it. So that's pretty much it for this video. I hope this video helped you and if it did, not just subscribe, press the bell button so that you don't miss anything. Give us a like and I'll see you guys in my next one. Till then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating. Have you ever tried blurring the background? It looks so awesome, watch! It looks as if the subject is coming out of the frame, though I wish she would come out of my computer screen, but what was? It's close to that, right? Without it, with it. Nice tip to have. See you soon.